Uh, hey guys, how's it going? So, I thought I'd just speak a bit about Bob Lazar, being as he's come back into the headlines again. There's a new documentary coming out in next month, December, um, reinvestigating the Bob, La Bob Lazar case. So I'll put some links in the box below so you can check that out. So, when I first came across Bob Lazar myself, I was... Um, I guess I put Bob Lazar in the unsure box and sort of dropped it at the point because from around 2011, 2012, 2013, sometime around this point I sort of moved away from the ufology area from the extraterrestrial community and focused more on the spiritual awakening side of my life. And really it's only only recently that I've really come back into the sort of ufology side of things, even though of course I've always been talking about my contact experiences and channeling the IEL. But in a, in a way there's been more of a focus on the spiritual side of it, because this is the message that the ETs bring us, of course. we, If we want to have open contact we need to raise our consciousness and uh, to a level closer to theirs so we can have physical contact. But it seems I'm coming back to the world of ufology, excited to explore these things again. So. So Bob Lazar has been in the news, he seems to be the sort of buzzword in the UFO community again of late. So, so the reason I sort of dropped Bob Lazar and sort of wasn't sure about him and possibly even thought he was a bit of a hoax is um, mainly due to Stanton Friedman. And um, the same reason why perhaps a lot of people wrote off Bob Lazar because um, see Stan Stanton Friedman had a bit of a mission to sort of uh, debunk Bob Lazar. He, he um, mainly based on the fact that Bob's history, um, Bob's claims of um, being a, a student, a graduate of MIT and Caltech, I believe, were un... they were un no one has been able to confirm this. There's no record that Bob ever went to um, MIT or Caltech, so a lot of people just presume this meant that Bob was a, a liar, mainly based on Stanton Friedman's testimony. He, he strongly believed that Bob was a fraud and um, and really sort of made a bit of a campaign to like um, give him a bad name. But as this has come back to the surface now, I've just been doing a lot of research today and um, I've come to the conclusion that I believe Bob was probably telling the truth. He's probably legitimate. Um, so one of the main reasons, while, while it, they weren't able to prove his career at the MIT, they, it seems he did work at Los Alamos Los Alamos Air Base, I think it's an air base, which is another sort of semi-top secret sort of military installation. And it seems he did work as a physicist there, so this a, sort of lends a lot of his credence to his uh, claims. And so while not being an expert on the case, I've been looking at a lot of other people's testimony, and this, this guy that's doing this new documentary, if I just grab his name, yeah, it's um, a guy called Jeremy Corbell. He's, he's actually got um, a YouTube channel called Jeremy Corbell, so you can check him out there. I'll put some links in the box later. And he's done a very in-depth um, investigation into the Bob Lazar case, and it seems he's convinced that, um, that the Bob Lazar is legitimate. And he seems a very um, intelligent guy, this Jeremy Corbell. He seems to have done a... He doesn't seem to be just, like, gullible and just jumping on the bandwagon. He's done a very in-depth analysis of this, which I'm sure will come out in the documentary next month, and I'm, I'm going to watch it myself for sure. And... I'd recommend you check it out if you're interested in this sort of thing. And of course, George Knapp was the guy that, I, I think George Knapp is the name, I'm not a facts and figures guy, so don't quote me on all my facts and figures and dates, but gen generally I like to think I, I speak from a place of clarity. So George Knapp was the guy who brought um, Lazar into the public eye. And George Knapp, he's, he's now a well-known radio presenter, he covers a lot of this sort of alternate news, this sort of thing. And um, although Bob Lazar was his sort of foot, foot I think he, he was, did a lot of work with John Lear, and John Lear and Bob Lazar were his first sort of entry into this sort of realm. And George Knapp still stands by him to this day. George Knapp seems a very, you know, level-headed guy with his head screwed on and believes him, has met him, and believes he's telling the truth. And also I've just watched an interview with this guy, Jeremy Corbell, and um, Richard Dolan. And Richard Dolan is a researcher I hugely respect. Ever since I saw him at Exopolitics Leeds in 2011, he's a, he's a guy who's done like a massive amount of research and a bit of 
sort of alarm bells are going in my head because he, he's become quite sort of anti Corey Good and this Corey Good David Wilcox secret space program and that's a whole nother area and I can perfectly understand why he's sceptical because really Corey has no evidence but I, there's a number of reasons why I believe Corey Goods could well be telling the truth but perhaps that's for another video because that is a deep and complicated thing and we've got to go deep into the nature of reality when we explore that but so so while I perhaps don't agree with um Well, I forgot his name. What's going on? Richard Dolan. So it's because I'm going off track. So, but, but generally, Richard Dolan is like an amazing guy. He, if you want a sort of level headed guy who's able to analyze and come to a rational decision and a rational, truthful decision about um, a UFO incident, so sort of Richard Dolan, for me at least, has always been the go to guy. So I hugely respect um, Richard Dolan's perspective on sort of weighing up the evidence and um, judging characters, I guess, to a certain extent, but ma mainly based on the evidence. And watching this interview between Richard Dolan and Jeremy Corbell, Richard, it seems Richard Dolan is fairly convinced that um, Bob Lazar is, seems to be a legit guy telling the truth. Um, I've watched quite a bit of his, um, I've just watched some of his original testimony and a lot of his new testimony today. And there's quite a bit of, because um, he sort of went off radar like 30 years ago, I think he came forth in 1989 and went off radar for several years. And I've watched a lot of his material and he appears to be telling the truth. He appears to be a straight up guy. So I'm fairly convinced that Bob Lazar is legit. And so, so Bob Lazar is the guy that brought Area 51 into the, into, really into the public mind. No one had really ever heard of Area 51. I'm fairly sure no one had heard of Area 51 or S4, the um, place that Bob worked at 15 miles south of the Area 51 um, complex. So without Bob Lazar, Area 51 wouldn't probably be known about and of course Area 1 is officially acknowledged even with um, President Obama going live on, on the record saying that he was the first, talking about Area 51 and sort of um, gloating that he was the first president ever to officially talk about Area 51. So, so it's of course a real place and I think everyone knows it's a real place now but before Bob Lazar no one knew that Area 51 even existed, no one had heard of it. Um, Richard Dolan was saying that um, there were some rumours about this place called Dreamland or Groom Lake but it was really Bob Lazar that brought it into the mainstream consciousness. And so Bob Lazar was famous for talking about this element 115 which is so I don't know the depths of this, but it seems that Ele no one had heard of Element 115 at the time, but since then, scientists have now synthesised something they call Element 115. And I, I need to look into this deeper. I, d I don't understand how like elements are, are termed or whether Element 115 in any way could relate to the what Element 115 that Bob Lazar talks about. But I think it probably does. So... So really, I just wanted to make this video just to, just to sort of give a heads up that Bob Lazar is back on the scene. I believe he is a legitimate uh, whistleblower. I think we can call him a whistleblower because he certainly blew the whistle on Area 51, a lot of stuff going on there. Um, just listening to a bit of his testimony now, a lot of it syncs up with my own um, understanding of who these ETs are. So when I saw what Bob Lazar was talking about in the Flying Saucers, I assumed that they were like the Zeta Greys that I have channeled in the past myself and talk about myself. And I literally just heard Bob just now saying that from his knowledge, um, the craft that they had, because Bob Lazar was working, he was reverse, he was attempting to reverse engineer the propulsion system that was on board the this extraterrestrial craft, and this is what Bob Lazar talks about. So Google him, like look him up, and you'll you'll find all this out. So he basically was reverse engineering this flying saucer, and he was able to board the flying saucer. And he talks about how it was like, you know, s small seats for small beings, and like a lot of the stuff corroborates with like um like what Bashar talks about, and I think it was, if I'm correct, it was Betty and Barney Hill that first pointed to the Zeta Reticuli star system as the source of the Zeta Greys. And it goes a bit deeper as, as we get into Bashar's and the Yael's explanation of who the Zetas really are. From their perspective, they are parallel reality Earth humans who tunnel through to our parallel timeline and set up base in the Z Zeta Reticular star system, so it's a little bit more complicated, but it all syncs up. So Bob Lazar says that this craft came to his understanding, from his understanding, from a star system, from a planet orbiting the Zeta Reticular 1 and 2 binary star system. And... 
sorry, just got distracted by sound. And so where was I? Yeah, and what else does he talk about? There was something else he talked about. Yeah, and it, but basically a lot of it syncs up with the information I have about the greys. He's shown images of them and they look very much like, of course, the classic Zeta grey. So, so basically that's it. I think Bob Lazar is legit. I think he's the real deal. I think you should check him out if you're interested in this sort of stuff. And so perhaps from here on, rather than just waffling on about stuff that I don't have a huge depth of, you know, factual knowledge about I'll just call it a day there so thanks for listening guys catch up again soon shivai good day